I want to talk secondly about this the situation with the California budget and you know there's a there's a local angle to this you know uh, and I like to keep my podcast local but just broad brush there was this um, there's another article this was in Cal Matters and it was posted online by Chris Cruz who is a a local Powegian here in my hometown, kind of a community activist, likes to, you know, generate discussion and sometimes activism around certain local issues. And she posted this article, Winners and Losers in the California Budget. And it was interesting to me. Um, now, you know, we're wondering who's winning and who's losing, you know, in the California budget. You can go through this. It's interesting. The the you know, recipients of um of covered California, you know, these are people that are getting subsidies for healthcare. They're winning. Home buyers are winning because they keep getting subsidies to buy houses, which, by the way, is distorting our housing marketplace and causing a housing crisis, in my opinion. There are losers in this budget. You know, people that are pushing for climate change are upset about this. Um, you know, there there are cities that want more money to address homeless. They're not getting as much as they want. They're upset about that. Um, even in education, there's sort of a mixed bag going on here. In K through 12, they're getting more money. They're getting an 8.22% cost of living increase. So our local school district should be ecstatic about that. But on the other hand, they're cutting a $200 million you know, grant for arts and music. But didn't we just vote on a proposition to provide more funding for arts and music in our California schools? I think we did. And then, you know, transit agencies are going to get $5.1 billion over four years because, you know, all this mass transit is facing a fiscal cliff. We're going to get into this a little bit when we talk about Jim Desmond and congestion pricing. But essentially, ridership of mass transit is going down. The cost to, you know, provide all these trolleys and subways and, and trains and buses is really expensive and getting more expensive and don't get me started on the California bullet train either, which I don't even know if they've laid any rail for that in the first place. But they're ended up getting not as much money as they want. So there's a lot of, you know, you look at the California budget. And remember, they used to say we were always in a surplus. Well, now we're in a deficit and they've got to make some tough decisions. And, you know, here we have Gavin Newsom, the governor of California. And many people suspect he might be the next president of the United States. I mean, especially if Biden drops out and Trump implodes and, you know, a lot of people are are saying that that's one of the reasons why Newsom has been so aggressive attacking DeSantis right now, because at some point they figure that Biden is going to step down, citing health reasons or family reasons. And Gavin Newsom would be the 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 guy that would kind of take over. It wouldn't be Vice President Harris. It'd be Newsom. And the Democrats are seeing that maybe Trump is going to, you know, with all this crisis going on with his his uh, affairs, you know, both financial and personal, et cetera, he may implode. It may end up being DeSantis and Newsom. And I think in that case, Newsom would probably win. Um, if for nothing else, he'd have the best hair. <laughs> but, but this invited an interesting question. I thought I'd talk about it in the podcast. And this is where we got to get a little bit more local is when, um, you know, Chris Cruz, who, again, I respect she, she, she and I don't always agree on things, but she really likes to generate a lot of discussion. And, you know, this headline said winners and losers in the California budget. And I made a comment. I go, well, isn't that what government always does? Government policies, the way business is done in government today is they pick winners and losers. You know, usually there's some distortion in the market that's caused by lobbyists to get federal, or excuse me, get government officials to vote one way or another on a particular bill that rewards some at the expense of others. I mean, we see that in our hometown of Poway, where we, there was a flood of money coming into our local elections to prop up developers, because, you know, developers wanted to I guess, donate money either to pro-building candidates or into PACs against anti-development candidates. Or in other ways, they wanted to find ways to offer charitable donations to politicians that support development by helping out their, their, uh, their charitable causes like Steve Voss's Candles for Candlelight or even what's going on with La Mesa Vice Mayor Colin Parent 
and his uh, Circulate San Diego. He's getting donations from corporations that are pushing for more development. But that's what ends up happening with all these policies. And it led to an interesting discussion because here in the city of Poway, the local government spent, what was it, four, I think Chris said $4 million to incentivize Toyota to move across the street. We have a Toyota dealership in Poway. And that eventually kind of cleared space so they can build a Lowe's store, you know, a home improvement hardware, uh, home improvement store. And you're thinking, this is crazy. <laughs> you know, why are taxpayers, you know, people like us in Poway that are paying crazy property taxes? I mean, you can question the dollar. I mean, you can question the percentage we pay in property taxes, but the dollar amount we pay is a lot because home value is a lot. And we're spending money on sales tax, you know, by shopping in our hometown of Poway. And then we see this money is just like handed over to the one of the local auto dealerships just to get them to move across the street so they can accommodate a different corporation. Now, is that government picking winners and losers? I think it is. Um, and, and there's so many other examples of this. I mean, we can go on and on um, where there are all these distortions that one group benefits at the expense of the other. Now, in my opinion, you know, we shouldn't be looking at the through the lens of winners and losers. I and mean, that's how Donald Trump sees the world. You know, he's a winner and you're a loser. And that's how he likes to frame discussions. I like to frame it in, in the case of win-win. Those are the kinds of things I like, where two people or two parties or two groups or two companies or whatever it is, get together and cooperate and trade. And I think that is where we need to go because right now, I mean, look at our housing crisis in, in San Diego. Talk about winners and losers. For the longest time, the NIMBYs have been the winners. The NIMBYs have been the ones that say, hey, don't build it in my backyard. Go build it over there. You know, And they have been funding and supporting political candidates that support that cause. And by preventing that development, they've seen their home values rise. Be, not only because there's no development nearby, but also because it promotes scarcity of housing. And there's huge demand in San Diego, and when there's not enough supply, then prices go up. And so NIMBYs have been winning, but at the expense of other people, like first-time home buyers or families that want to move up, or you know, just in general, people that want to buy houses because they've gotten so expensive in California. You know, so a lot of times that's what government policies do, you know, and they they try to sell it as, oh, this is for the common good. This is to help people. But it's usually a scheme to help those that are donating money to get those policies approved. I mean, consider uh, college education. We've seen tuition rates rise dramatically, far greater than the than the um, inflation rate. <laughs> inflation has been pretty bad lately. But still, tuition rates keep rising and rising. Why? Well, because there are all these incentives that are given to encourage people to go to college. Government offers loans to students so they can go to college. Sounds good, right? Sounds like it's coming from a warm place in your heart. But ultimately, what that does is, is that they build more and more, or excuse me, they have more and more students going to these schools to the point that the schools can't handle it, and they have to restrict the number of people they let in. And as a result, demand exceeds supply and prices go up. So again, winners and losers. And here in California, for the longest times, the winners were a lot of times international students that were coming here because they, they were able to get in and they were happy to get in. They had to pay a higher price. But it often came at the expense of, of Californians who are paying state sales taxes that fund and subsidize our University of California system and our Cal State system and our community college system. And their kids couldn't get in. And California kids end up going to schools outside of California. So it's just amazing to me, this, this notion of winners and losers and how government pulls this off. Another great example um, are tariffs. Uh, you know, we, we hear this from not only the MAGA right, but we also hear this from the Bernie Sanders left, where they'll say, we need to protect American jobs. We need to protect American workers. So we've got to keep those cheap imports away from America. We need to 
we need to put tariffs on those imported goods. Or they even kind of create, in some cases, Trump you know, lies and says, China needs to pay for these tariffs, but they don't. The people that pay for the tariffs are Americans. And what they do is, is tariffs are a thing that benefits the very few at the expense of the very many. Tariffs reward corporations that don't want competition from overseas companies. And as a result, we get higher prices either from domestic suppliers or higher prices because of the tariff on the imported goods. Winners and losers. Baby formula is another crazy one as well. Remember we had a baby formula crisis about, I don't know, was it six months ago, a year ago? Because a, a, a baby formula manufacturing plant, suddenly they had problems. They couldn't produce enough product. And then the manufacturing facility broke down. I think they had some you know, health or safety issues and they had to shut the thing down for a period of time. But you know, there's only like three or four you know, major baby formula manufacturers in the United States. But you figure, okay, well, no big deal. If one of the big ones in America goes down, then we can just import more from Canada or we can import more from Europe. I mean, after all, they've got really good baby formula in Europe, right? But there are bans on imports. There are limits on how much baby formula can come into America from, uh, from Canada because they want to protect the big dairy industries. And so again, winners and losers, you know, so Americans got penalized, especially mothers with children got penalized. They were scrambling to find baby formula. They were the losers. The winners were the, the corporate executives that are in those very few baby formula companies. They, the ones that have been winning for decades because they've been able to limit their competition. So, I mean, just so many examples of this, that it, it's just nuts. But um, it was an interesting conversation, and I thank Chris Cruz for bringing it up. You know, she usually does bring up some good discussion topics that have a local Poway angle to it. This was a little bit more broad in scope, but there's still definitely, I think the Poway auto dealership issue is a good example of it. Um, Yuri Bolin on the live stream says, with the California deficit, I guess the French wine costs more than Governor Newsom thought. Yeah, Newsom... He's like Teflon, right? I mean, he's just, he generally always comes off really good, even when he gets caught at the French laundry, you know, during COVID when all the restaurants were shut down. You remember that? The lockdowns. And then he had a private event at a restaurant in Napa Valley at the French laundry, and which is a which is a really high-end exclusive restaurant, not a laundromat. Um, yeah. So Newsom is I, you know, he was touting the California surplus for so long. I mean, that was largely driven by $6 trillion of money that was dumped into the economy, much, much of it in California during the COVID pandemic. And people went out and spent it like crazy and tax revenues went cha-ching for the state of California. Well, that tidal wave of free money is in our rearview mirror. But the California budget, they keep spending and spending and they're spending like it was 2020 or 2021. And now all of a sudden they've got a deficit. So yeah, Yuri, he's Gavin Newsom's realizing that things are going to be a lot more expensive. That's for sure. Okay.